Introducing the 1998 Forester. This new vehicle combines all the capabilities and excitement of a sport utility vehicle with the convenience and economy of a station wagon. This program outlines the proper procedures and recommended sequence for performing a pre-delivery inspection on the 1998 Forester. As you go through the items on the PDI checklist, remember that a lot depends on your thoroughness. Although Subaru vehicles are manufactured to the highest standards of quality, the process is complicated. An occasional item may need to be corrected. It is up to you to notice that item. We want every Forester to be delivered in superb condition, so keep your ears and eyes open. If something strikes you as wrong, the customer will probably feel the same way. This program will cover pre-road test inspection, the road test itself, and post-road test inspection. Follow the sequence on the checklist. It has been carefully designed to help you do a thorough inspection, efficiently, in the time allotted. Let's start with the things you should check before the road test. First, remove the pre-printed PDI check sheet from the owner information kit in the glove box. Record the vehicle identification number and the dealer code in the spaces provided on the form. Be sure to keep the form with you as you inspect the vehicle so you can check off each task as you complete it. Follow these steps to activate the memory circuits. Open the hood. Remove the cover of the main fuse box, which is located behind the battery. Move the 15 amp fuse from the transit location and insert it into the memory circuit slot. Check the fluid levels and top them off if necessary. First, the windshield washer fluid reservoir. This reservoir provides fluid for both the front and rear windshields. Next, the battery cells. The engine coolant recovery tank. And the brake fluid reservoir. Check the engine oil level. The power steering fluid. And the front differential fluid level. If you find any low fluid levels, add fluid where necessary. Use only genuine Subaru fluids or recommended substitutes. See your Subaru service manual for the correct grades and viscosities of fluids. Next, connect the air conditioning compressor clutch leads. Now get the antenna, stored in a special compartment in the back of the vehicle, along with its wrench and install the antenna. Put the wrench in the glove box when you are finished with it. Be careful not to over tighten the antenna when installing it. Get in the vehicle and put the key in the ignition. Turn the ignition switch to on, but don't start the engine. You should hear a chime indicating that the key is in the ignition switch. Make sure all the warning lamps light up. These include the ABS, airbag, door ajar, automatic transmission oil temperature, seat belt, oil level, voltmeter, check engine, and brake. The airbag lamp will go off after six to eight seconds. The automatic transmission oil temperature lamp will blink if there's an electrical problem with the automatic transmission or any of the electrical components that support the transmission. Turn on the rear defogger and leave it on. Make sure the LEDs light up when you push the button. The rear defogger will go off by itself after 15 minutes. Check that the front and rear windshield wipers and washers work in all switch positions. The CATS coating should already have been removed before you operate the wipers. Otherwise, the coating could gum them up. In the mist position, 
the front windshield wiper will wipe once to clear away mist. If you push the button at the end of the lever, the front washers will squirt. Check the alignment of the washers. It is adjustable. If you turn the knob to the first detent, the rear windshield wiper operates. In the second detent, the rear washer will squirt. Again, check its alignment. With the ignition switch still on, turn the headlights on. Make sure the headlights work on both low and high beams. Make sure the high beam indicator appears on the instrument panel cluster when you turn the high beams on. Turn the headlights off and check the high beam flasher. Pull the lever toward you and release it to flash the headlights. Verify that the instrument panel lights brighten and dim when you operate the variable illumination control. Next, check the headlight alignment. As with previous Subaru vehicles, the headlight assemblies have a built-in alignment system. With the vehicle parked on the level, check the gradient on each headlamp assembly. For proper horizontal positioning, the index mark should align with the center line of the gradient. For correct vertical positioning, the air bubble should be centered in the sight gauge. Now turn the lights to the park position. Check that the parking lamps illuminate. Press the hazard flasher and make sure the signal indicators are both working. Apply the brake pedal. This releases the transmission shift lock. Shift the transmission into reverse. Make sure the red indicator bar properly aligns with the R. Apply the parking brake and make sure it is properly adjusted. Step on the service brake pedal and make sure there is some travel. Now fasten the driver's seat belt and check it for proper operation. Check that the seat belt height adjuster works. Check that the seat belt chime and warning lamp go out when the driver's seat belt is fastened. Check the front passenger's seat belt as well. If the check engine light blinks at a rate of three times per second with the ignition switch on, the green inspection mode connectors under the dash panel are still connected. Turn the ignition switch off and locate the connectors, disconnect them, and tuck them back under the dash panel. With the ignition switch off, connect the new select monitor to the data link connector under the dash. Then turn the ignition switch on and check for diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs. If necessary, clear the memory. Leave the new select monitor connected for the road test. With the ignition switch off, turn the parking light switch on the steering column on and make sure the parking lights illuminate. Beep the horn. Set the parking brake and shift the transmission into reverse. Get out of the car and check all the rear lamps. Now check the front lamps. The fog lamps should come on with the fog lamp switch on and the headlights on low beam. Turn the ignition switch to off. Make sure the hazard flashers and the parking lamps are off so they don't drain the battery. Back in the vehicle, turn the ignition switch on and operate the turn signals. Do the turn signals and the turn signal lamp indicators work? Set the parking brake. Does the parking brake indicator work? Next, check the operation of the remote power mirrors. Make sure the mirrors move left, right, up, and down. Check both the left and right mirror controls as well as the center off position. Set both clocks to the correct time, the one in the overhead console and the one in the radio. Check the operation of the radio. Tune in an FM station. 
Try each of the controls to verify that all the controls work. Push the scan button to scan to the next station. Pushing the TB button allows you to adjust the bass, treble, fade, and balance. The radio is on. The DISP button will let you switch the display from radio to clock and back. If the radio is off, the DISP button will let you turn the clock display on and off. If the vehicle is equipped with a cassette deck, put a cassette in it and make sure all the controls work. Adjust the height of the steering wheel. Set the friction lock and make sure it locks the steering wheel in position. Turn the steering wheel and verify that it locks with the ignition switch off. Check all the seat adjustments. On the driver's seat, these include the front back adjustment, the seat cushion angle and height in the front and back, the seat recliner, the lumbar support lever, and the headrest height adjustment. Next, check the passenger seat. The only adjustments on this seat are front back and recliner. Next, check the power window operation. With the window open, push the driver's window switch in the up position and verify that the window closes as long as the switch is held. With the window up, push the switch in the express down position, then release the switch. The window should lower all the way. Check the operation of all the other windows. Leave all the windows down. Check the window lock button on the driver's window controls. When the switch is pressed, all the windows except the drivers should be locked out. Next, check the door locks. On vehicles equipped with power door locks, lock and unlock all doors, listening and watching the levers move when you operate the switches. The driver's door lock switch should lock and unlock all five doors, including the rear gate. On vehicles equipped with manual door locks, lock and unlock each door. Check the dome light and the map light. The dome light switch has three positions, off, door, and on. With the switch in the door position, the dome light comes on when you open the door. It fades off about five seconds after the door is closed. Check the fuel door. The white button is designed to hold the door closed. Give the button a push to make sure it springs back. Unscrew the fuel filler cap, check the tether, and then screw the cap back on. It should click at least three times, indicating that it fits tightly. If not, it may be too loose. If fuel vapor escapes, this can set a DTC and cause the check engine light to come on. Put your hand on the rear window. It should be warm, indicating that the rear defogger is working. Make sure the key locks and unlocks both front doors and the rear gate. Record the key numbers in the box on the check sheet. The number is stamped on a metal tag on the key ring. Check the rear seat belts. Make sure they fasten properly. Make sure the child safety door locks operate properly. Set each lock, close its door, then reach through the open window and pull the rear door handle. Afterward, leave the door in the unlocked position. With the vehicle on a lift, check the tire pressure at each wheel. 
Inspect underneath the vehicle for any leaks. Check whether the steering linkage is loose. Check the cross-member bolts, the bolts on the lower support arms, and the bolts on the shifter cable. Make sure they are tight. Are all bolts and bushings secure? Is there anything loose or missing? Now lower the vehicle and take it out for a road test. During the road test, use common sense and follow these safety rules. Don't play the radio except when you're specifically testing it. Obey all speed limits and traffic regulations. And always wear your safety belts. Throughout the road test, try to see, hear, and feel things from the customer's point of view. Remember, if it doesn't feel right to you, it probably won't feel right to the customer either. Listen when you start the engine. Notice the cranking and cold idle speeds. Accelerate the engine and observe the tachometer. Verify that the warning indicator lamps go out when you release the parking brake. Turn on the radio and check reception of one of the AM stations as you leave the service area. Then turn the radio off. Check the engine performance in its different operating modes, including cranking, idling, and accelerating. Check that the transmission is performing properly, with no slipping or binding. Listen as the transmission shifts through the gears. Move the automatic transmission shift lever through all its drive positions and reverse to make sure the transmission is smooth. If the vehicle has a manual transmission, make sure the gears engage smoothly without grinding. Listen for proper clutch operation and engagement. With the vehicle moving, make sure it turns smoothly and that the steering does not bind. Does the vehicle pull to one side? Is the steering responsive? Is there excessive road shock, more than you would expect from a bumpy road? Simulate a panic stop by braking hard from a speed of 30 to 35 miles per hour. Select a straight road that has no traffic. The vehicle should stop in a straight line without skidding or wheel lockup. Make sure the vehicle shows good directional stability during hard braking. Check that the speedometer, odometer, and trip odometer work correctly. Reset the trip odometer by pressing the odometer trip meter control button once, and then push it again and hold it for three seconds. Check the other gauges as well. Check the turn signals in both directions to make sure they operate properly and cancel when the turn is finished. Check the operation of the cruise control. Pull off the road and set the parking brake. Make sure the heating, ventilation and air conditioning controls all work. Push the fresh recirc slider from the fresh air position to recirculating air and back. Feel whether the fresh recirc flap opens and closes. Listen for a change in the sound of the blower. Push the air distribution buttons. Check the upper and lower register vents to make sure the air flows correctly. Now bring the vehicle back inside for the post-road test inspection. Set the parking brake and make sure it works correctly. Check again to see if any DTCs have been set and remove the select monitor. If there are any DTCs, record them on a repair order and inform your service manager. Now that the vehicle has reached normal operating temperature, check the automatic transmission fluid level again. Look to see whether any fluids are leaking from underneath the vehicle. Check the spare tire. Is it properly inflated? 
Is the emergency jack kit in place in the side compartment? It should have the jack, the lug wrench, and the handle. Remove the seat covers and headrest protectors if they have not already been removed. Inspect the upholstery and the interior. Are there any flaws? Is anything damaged? And that's it. Make sure you've checked everything on the PDI form. If you notice any problems that require service or repairs, tell your service manager. Sign and date the PDI form, put the original copy in the glove box and the duplicate copy in the dealer file. Your work in performing a thorough PDI inspection is critical. You are the person who makes the final quality check before the vehicle is delivered to the owner. Whether or not he or she will be satisfied and will want to purchase another Subaru vehicle in the future depends to a great extent on you. Keep your customers satisfied and keep them coming back by doing a good PDI every time.